Hi guys and welcome once again to the Coffee and Heroes YouTube show, your weekly roundup of all things comics, movies, TVs, and anything else that really catches my eye. First of all, how cool was that new logo that's done by one of our regulars, Kaelin McBride. Really, really talented guy. He's actually got some original artwork hanging in the store. He's done some cool reproductions of some iconic covers and those are all for sale in the store. But yeah, really talented guy. Of course, uh, I have no doubt I'll get bashed for containing two DC characters and zero Marvel, but you know, come to expect it at this point, I suppose. But anyway, I uh, hope you guys out there are keeping well. Uh, recording this on September 19th. So this week, a little quieter for us this week. Uh, I don't know if it's the middle of the month, sort of bump, you know, the bump uh, week of the month, you know, uh, in between the start and the end of the month. That mixed with obviously the, the lack of Marvel titles this week, which was a bit of a shame. But that just means that although it was a bit quieter this week, it'll probably be a bit busier next week because we'll have a double uh, amount of Marvel titles to come. So, I mean, busy enough. You know, there was still good stuff released this week. There were still some great titles, some great uh, indie titles as well as great DC stuff. And when it came to my favourite picks of the week, it was actually hard, even with a reduced week, to narrow it down to just three. But when it came to my picks this week, uh, absolutely no one will be surprised that Batman 99 was one of them. <clears throat> this was thoroughly brilliant. Uh, Tinian continues to do great work on the title. Uh, Jimenez's art is superb. I mean, just to flick it open and actually demonstrate some of the artwork in this. There was a lot of sort of splash pages. There was a lot of, you know, double page spreads. There was just, it felt really big and epic and... Also had the return of a, uh, a certain character, just this side, who had been absent for a while in his truest form. But yeah, just, you know, you look at that artwork there, and also that great advert for Joker Killer's Man. But you look at that artwork there, I think Jimenez is absolutely killing it on this. And it was just a spectacularly good issue. The artwork was just tremendous in it. Story was great. I wouldn't have minded Joker War actually being a little longer uh, within the main title. Obviously, there are tie-ins that have uh, come out with it through Nightwing and through um, Red Hood and through Batgirl and Detective Comics and so forth. But I wouldn't mind it if the main story was a little bit longer because it's been great so far. Uh, my second title actually this week that I really, really dug was Catwoman 25. Now, this is actually a variant cover by Libra Mayo. I think we're out of stock of this in the store. But we do have the cover A still in stock, which are by Joel Jones, who's been pretty much the artist on Catwoman or, uh, since it, its inception at number one. But this was actually a, a slightly bigger issue. There was three individual stories in it. They're all written by Ram V, who's one of my favourite writers around. He's just recently taken over Justice League Dark as well. But there was three stories here. You have one from Fernando Blanco on art, one from John Paul Leon on art, and one with Juan Ferreira on art. And Ram V wrote all three. Really great issue. Uh, the first story was predominantly about how Catwoman is going to help Bruce, try and help Bruce rekindle a lot of his wealth that obviously the Joker has stolen in Joker War. How else but through a heist. So I thought that was really, really strong. thought the second issue was really good as well about Catwoman going back to her roots in Alley Town. And then the third one was, uh, believe it or not, all from the point of view of a cat. And it had a running monologue. Uh, really, really strong issue. Highly, highly recommend it. You could pick it up almost just as a one shot, but there are going to be two of these issues. This is 25 and then 26 comes out and 26 is going to be Joker War uh, tie-in as well. So highly recommend that. A strong possibility for issue of the week for me. Uh, the other one that is a real strong, it's probably between these two, to be honest. I know, Batman not at the top, what's going on? The other one was an indie title called Stillwater. Uh, I don't have a copy on me now because Vicky has it at the store. I always record these on a Saturday and she sort of closes up the store to finish off. So it was a new indie title by Chip Zdarsky. So as soon as I see that name, I'm certainly interested. Uh, arts by Ramon Perez. Really great horror title. One of the best number ones, I think, this year. The main crux of the story has to do with this town called Stillwater. That is like this sleepy, hidden away town somewhere in middle America. And if you live in this town, you don't age and you can't die. A really, really interesting uh, story. And then, of course, two people come in from the outside to discover this and, and all the rest. So really strong first issue. It's already went back to second print as well. We do have a couple of the first prints still left in store. But just in case you missed out on it, we will be ordering in the, uh, the second prints as well. So really, really strong week this week anyway. I could have easily thrown in another title. 
but I don't want to break the rules and go above three. Uh, I leave that to Keith on the podcast. So, uh, but yeah, that was this week. But in terms of next week, really beautiful thick invoice. So you can see my notes on the back. Let's just ignore that. Uh, really thick invoice this week for uh, what's coming next week, predominantly because we do have two weeks worth of Marvel titles coming out. Uh, it was a bit annoying not to get the Marvel titles this week, not just from a business point of view in terms of the store being busier, but there was also some great stuff due this week that we have had to wait an extra week for. A new Thor issue, for example, a new, uh, new Iron Man series that launched. But just to take you through sort of the things I'm looking forward to most, you know, we've got, so the previews book is coming next week. December already looks seriously stacked in terms of what's coming out. Some absolutely tremendous looking titles in December, which we'll certainly get on to more in <clears throat> our previews podcast, but also I'll go through the previews book a little bit here on, on the show next week. So the new previews books come in, they're always available in store if you want to pop in and have a wee coffee or a Coke or whatever and have a look through the books in case there's stuff you want to add to the, to the old pull list. But yeah, so next week we've got new action comics, so we're up to 1025 of that. We've got Alien, the original screenplay, number two coming. Uh, number one sold out like that for us, uh, so it's proven very, very popular. We have Batgirl, number 49, so that's another tie-in to Joker War. That's actually the second last Batgirl issue of the current run. And I have to say, the Batgirl stuff's been great with Joker War. In fairness, all Joker War's been pretty great, but hey-ho. Uh, we've got Batman Superman coming next week, number 12 for that. Delighted to say we have Canto 2, The Hollow Men, number 2 coming. Uh, Captain America, number 23. We've got probably my favourite Marvel title, Daredevil, coming next week, number 22 of that. We've got another Death Metal tie-in coming next week. So this one is Speed Metal, number one. So looking forward to that. I believe Joshua Williamson has a big hand in that, obviously coming off the, uh, the long flash run he's just done. We've got some new figures coming next week as well. The multiverse figures that McFarlane toys are doing. I've got some of the White Knight ones coming next week. So there is a Batman and a Joker coming from that. And then I've got Azrael ordered as well. I'm just waiting on that to come in. We've also got Fantastic Four Antithesis, number two. Really dug the first one of that. I believe that's Mark Wade and uh, Neil Adams. You've got Flash 762 next week. We've got a real burst of Immortal Hulk stuff. We've got Immortal Hulk Zero. Immortal Hulk 37, but then also a one shot, which is Immortal She Hulk as well coming. Uh, the aforementioned Iron Man number one coming out, so that's a new series kicking off. I believe Christopher Cantwell on writing duties there. We've got Maestro number two, really dug the first one of that. Believe it or not, this is not a drill. Spider Man number four is coming out next week. The JJ Abrams written, well, co written Spider Man title that we haven't seen a new issue of since about last December. I mean, they're, they're even putting Doomsday Clock off its pedestal here with delays. But number four, that's coming. You got Spider-Man Noir number four coming as well. Really digging that series. You got plenty for the Star Wars fans next week. You got new Star Wars issue, new Star Wars Bounty Hunters issue, and new Star Wars Darth Vader issue. You got more copies of Stillwater coming that I just mentioned before. We got Suicide Squad number nine coming. We got new printings for a lot of Thor issues. So if you're playing catch up on that, we've got new printings. Believe it or not, number two is as far as a fifth print. Number five is as far as a fourth print. But also Thor number seven is coming next week as well. So really looking forward to that. Uh, there's graphic novel actually coming next week. I've been waiting on this coming in for ages. There was a really great Halloween movie uh, called Trick or Treat. I believe it was by Michael Doherty who... I think most people now know him for, I think he did Godzilla, King of Monsters. But there was a, an omni a comic book omnibus that I had never read. I don't know if it got released as single issues or just as a trade. But we've got the trades coming in for that. I'm really looking forward to that. And obviously coming in the October as well, it'll be a, a good read. We've got Undiscovered Country number 8 coming next week. So definitely look forward to that. Wind number 4 continues to be a great series. Wind from James Tinian. We have recently restocked that so that we've got number one, two, and three in stock. So if you're playing catch up, we've got it all. But really great title. Uh, Wind really, really enjoying that. Uh, X of Swords is kicking off this week with X of Swords Creation number one. And then we've got X Men number 12 as well. So tons and tons of great stuff there to look forward to, uh, I have to say. Uh, obviously, very Marvel heavy, which is, is cool given the, the lack of it this week. So yeah, tons to look forward to there. 
Uh, one other thing I should mention as well, <clears throat> I know people have been waiting on this news, so I'll keep you in a little longer. So CGC is going to go live from this Monday. Uh, you should not be looking at my face right now, but you should be looking at a nice long list of the sign that we'll be putting up for CGC. We'll have this on our Facebook page as well, on the website, and, and printed it in store. So submissions so are going to go live from this Monday. This is just giving you an idea of the pricing involved. We've worked really hard to make sure that we are the best price around for this. You should not be able to get this done cheaper anywhere close by. We spoke about it before we're not looking to make tons of money on this it's it's something we want to reward our regulars with it's a service we want to offer them uh, at the best possible price so the one thing is they will always go off in batches of 25 because again i think i've explained it before but just for posterity i'll just say again so when it comes to return postage we get it costs us a little more in northern ireland because unfortunately we pay to ship them to england then there's a shipping charge from England to America and return. But then there's another charge when they ship them back from England to us. If you live in England, you can actually go to their offices and pick it up. And therefore, you don't even have to pay a postage charge. But with us, it's it's one postage charge if you live in England, but another or, or in the mainland, I should say. But it's another postage charge for Northern Ireland. So we get slightly screwed over a little bit. But the, the shipping sort of the different ratios for shipping are one to five is one shipping cost six to ten is another one and then 11 to 25 is another one so we're always going to send it off in batches of 25 that was one way we were able to keep the the, the cost down so what we'll do is anytime you're dropping books to us we'll let you know how many we have ready to go for other people and let you know if it's up to 25 because there's no point of sending them off early it would result in the the service costing more so we want to cut down on that and therefore be bunches of 25. Now, considering I've already had uh, inquiries and probably tentatively have about 80 issues already lined up through different people who want it done, that's absolutely cool. So it, it should be fine every time. To be honest, if it's, say, we've 18 ready to go, I'll probably throw in seven from the store and get those done for the store uh, as well, just to make it up and so they're not sitting there too long. But yeah, I'm really, really excited to launch this. It's a, it's another cool service to add for the store. It's another, you know, string to our bow. Uh, we always want to be as, as all-encompassing a store as we possibly can be. So uh, CGC going live this Monday, that is the 21st of September. We will start accepting submissions for that. So I know people have been waiting to, uh, to hear some news on that. So <coughs> that is pretty much the store maintenance uh, pretty much done. I'll just go through a few different bits and pieces that just sort of caught my eye this week I thought was worth uh, sharing and chatting about. So I talked there about the December previews book that's coming up. So we already know about Marvel and King and Black, which is going to be quite frankly huge from Donny Cates and Rand Stegman. DC are starting an event this uh, December as well, which is called Endless Winter, uh, which the idea is bringing the Justice League to Viking times. It's going to be written by Ron Mars and Andy Lanning. So... Ron Mars is very well known for Green Lantern especially. Andy Lanning, his most famous stuff would probably be Guardians of the Galaxy. He's a long-term Marvel writer. <clears throat> but, so, they're going to explore the idea of a Viking era Justice League, as I say. So it's going to be made up of Black Adam, Swamp Thing, Hippolyta, and the Viking Prince. The team will face off against the Frost King, a burly armored bruiser who bears a passing resemblance to Lobo, and a nine-part story that will run through several crossover issues and one-shots. Each part will also feature a flashback to the Viking era to see how the team came to pass. So, preview art for this has looked really, really cool. It does look a little bit messy in terms of how to order it because the parts of it are going to be... So you have a Justice League Endless Winter one-shot. It's then going to be in Flash 767. Then you're going to have a Superman Endless Winter special, Aquaman 66, Justice League 58, Teen Titans Endless Winter special number one, Justice League Dark 29, Black Adam Endless Winter Special number one and Justice League Endless Winter Special number two. So if that is something that uh, once the previews books come and you have a look at it, but it does interest you, do let us know because that will take a little bit of, you know, we will have to pay attention to that just because it sort of crossed over a lot of issues. It does look a little messy, to be honest, but I hopefully it'll be worth it. It does look like a good creative team and an interesting side of the DC Universe we maybe haven't seen too much before. Another thing that caught my eye this week is all these death metal one-shots, these anthology ones, are getting some great writers and creative people on them. 
you know, I was already stoked when I saw one of the earlier ones that Chip Zdarsky was writing for it. Well, for the first time in over a decade, it looks like Mark Wade is going to be writing for DC. You know, he of one of the greatest works in DC history of Kingdom Come. So, one of the uh, one shots is called, oh, these titles are all so long, Dark Knight's Death Metal, The Last Stories of the DC Universe. So, Mark Wade's going to be contributing a story to it alongside Scott Snyder, James Tinian, Joshua Williamson, Gail Simone, Mariko Tamaki, Jeff Lemire, Cecil Castellucci, Christopher Sabella. You know, fantastic, uh, I have to say. I mean, Mark Wade is a, is a DC legend. He's, he's a Marvel legend as well. He's a comics legend, full stop. But, you know, he's done some great st stuff with DC. Aforementioned Kingdom Come, great flash runs, Legion of Superhero stuff, you know, Justice League stuff. Mark Wade, uh, he ended up leaving in 2008, I think it was. And he signed an exclusive deal for uh, Marvel Comics. But it's great to see that he's going to be coming back. And, and I do wonder, I mean, a lot of titles have obviously been cancelled recently. A lot of the, the DC future is maybe slightly up in the air. So is this the first step to bring in Mark Wade into maybe Godfather, some sort of new initiative? Who knows? But we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, really looking forward to that, I have to say. And there's also going to be a beautiful variant for that by Gary Frank. Never a bad thing. So, Mark Wade back to DC. Uh, speaking of DC future plans, there was a, a tweet that went up, I think it was uh, yesterday. And it was basically a logo that said DC future state. And it said, uh, looking forward to this in January and February 2021. So, again, we don't know how much this is going to lead to something new within the, the DC universe. Or if we're going to be wait, if it's just going to be a tease upon a tease upon a tease. I really would love some clarification what the next couple of years are going to hold for DC, but maybe this will be the start of it. We'll wait and see. We've got Harley Quinn has been renewed. Uh, so for season three, anybody who's not watched the animated Harley Quinn series, I have to say it's pretty damn great. I was the biggest skeptic in the world for it. thought it would be terrible, but I've been totally turned around on it, I have to say. Really, really good stuff. So a third season's coming back, which would be in the middle of 2021. And this is actually forming part of what DC are doing in terms of rebranding their their app, shall we say, or their streaming service. <coughs> so it's actually going to be, Harley Quinn's going to come straight out of HBO Max. So a lot of DC Universe stuff is moving over to HBO Max. And then DC are going to rebrand uh, uh, their online stuff and call it DC Universe Infinite. And what it's going to be, it's going to be an online uh, premium comic book service that's going to go into the entire history of DC. Digital comics are not for me. As a store owner and as a collector, they're just not for me. <coughs> but there is a lot of, of uh, great stuff to go back to there. If you are a digital comics fan, if you do prefer digital, that's absolutely no problem. It's just not for me. But that'll be something to keep an eye on. I think they'll run like DC fan events through it and stuff like that as well. And then just one last little bit of news, although this is still to be officially confirmed, but it seems to be pretty, pretty nailed on. But Henry Cavill uh, has signed a new deal to reprise his role as Superman in future DC films. The idea seems to be that he is tied in for up to six movies. This can be a combination of solo Superman movies, Justice League team-ups, it can be cameos in other movies. Certainly from fandom, I got the impression that he was definitely going to be in uh, Black Adam, The Rock's uh, upcoming movie. The way he spoke about, you know, Justice League, we're coming for you, and Superman, I'll see you soon, all this kind of stuff. But, yeah, definitely, I'm definitely stoked that he's going to continue doing it. I think Henry Cavill's a great Superman. I am unapologetically a massive fan of Man of Steel and BBS, <coughs> Ultimate Edition, of course. So, it's good to see that... Uh, Hopefully, common sense has finally prevailed, and they've offered some more, uh, offered him some sort of security for it, you know. So yeah, that was the DC sort of side of things. I'll just there is a few different Marvel bits and pieces, starting off with X Men Twelve, which I just mentioned, and Lino Yu has been the artist on X Men up until now, and I do know there has been some surprise that he's actually been on it as long as he has up to as far as issue twelve. I know people have said in the past that he was always known as you know, missing deadlines and things shipping late, but it was just to do with how detailed his art was. He was a little slower uh, than some of the other artists. But he's actually announced that next week will be his last as interior artist. 
and it's going to be a case of he's going to continue doing uh, covers for it. Now they do have a rather good replacement lined up with Mahmoud Azrar, who uh, works so well on Conan with Jason Aaron, so that's not really a bad replacement, I have to say. But yeah, so Lino you will be stepping away from that. I wonder if he'll have any other uh, projects lined up, maybe. Maybe he's coming to DC as well. Who knows? So that's that. Uh, speaking of the uh, Marvel comics, a bigger part, uh, Marvel are getting ready to do a massive tribute to Chadwick Boseman, who unfortunately passed there a few weeks ago after a long battle. And they did this with Stan Lee when he unfortunately died. They put the black banners across the top of the comics, you know, year he was born, year he died. And it looks like they're going to do something very, very similar. It's going to basically say, rest in power, Chadwick Boseman, 1976 to 2020. So it's a nice little tribute that it's always sort of nice to see that uh, they are actually going to pay, little, pay their respects to him, so to speak, you know. In terms of Marvel TV news, uh, this week they announced who was going to play She-Hulk for the Marvel TV show of the same name. So it's an award-winning actress called Titania Maslany. She's very well known for Orphan Black predominantly, but she has been cast as Jennifer Walters slash She-Hulk. Uh, Rick and Morty writer Jessica Gao is she's set up a writer's room for this series, and then I believe they announced the director for a lot of these. <coughs> pardon me, called Kat Quaro, who has directed Marry Me, Dead to Me, Shameless, and she is going to direct apparently the pilot and also several episodes of the She-Hulk series as well. So this is all starting to come together really well. I really hope that this run, this is based on the run done by Charles Soule, which was a really, really good run on She-Hulk. It only ran for like 12 issues, but it was a really, um, really great run on the character. And it focused as much on Jennifer Walters as a lawyer as it did on She-Hulk smashing things. So I think that would work really, really well for TV. So as well as that, in terms of the Marvel TV news, so to speak, uh, Disney released a new promo and they were confirming some stuff coming to the service by the end of this year. So WandaVision looks like it's going to come up in December. And there's also a docu-series which looks really interesting called Marvel 616. Uh, this is going to explore Marvel's rich legacy of pioneering characters, creators and storytelling to reflect the world outside your window. Uh, so really looking forward to that. And also, as I'm sure the whole world saw Mandalorian, they released a new trailer for the Mandalorian Season 2. This is going to hit on October 30th. I believe this is going to be similar to The Boys, though. So get ready, Internet Warriors, to start whinging that it's not being all dropped in one go. It looks like it's going to start streaming on Friday, October the 30th, and it's going to be like a weekly release scheduling type thing. So I can't wait for that Mandalorian Season 1. As anyone who knows me knows, I'm not the biggest Star Wars guy, but The Mandalorian Season 1 was exceptional. So really look forward to that, I have to say as well. So just a couple of wee small things just to finish off on. We were obviously talking about the Henry Cavill deal and it not being 100% finalised. It has been going on and on on social media for the last 24 hours plus. That Tom Hardy has been offered James Bond and has accepted it. Uh, apparently he auditioned for the role back in June. And... He has now heard back and he has got that role. Now, we're still waiting for um, we're still waiting for official confirmation on this. I've said for ages that Tom Hardy would be a perfect James Bond. Always said it. And the thing about it is people are maybe pointing to his age. He's 43. That's still younger than Roger Moore was when he took it over. He was 45. Uh, Daniel Craig, I think, was 39, 38, 39 when he took it over. <clears throat> but when No Time to Die comes out, he's 53. So Bond is always one of those ones. You get the feeling James Bond has always been James Bond for sort of 20 years plus, you know. So, you know, he's exceptionally experienced. So I think you need an older actor with a little bit of mileage as well. But for me, Tom Hardy is always the choice for anything. You know, James Bond, new Batman, although Pattinson looks like he's going to kill it. Uh, Wolverine, just a great, great actor. So uh, I'd be really chuffed to see if this actually came to fruition. Then just one last thing that I did see, and I'll be honest, I'm, I loved the first 10 seasons of South Park, and then I sort of drifted away from it. I'll watch the odd episode here and there. But they just announced 
that they're going to do a special one night hour long episode which is going to tackle the pandemic. Uh, so this alone has me interested. South Park's always been really cutting edge when it comes to tackling current issues and being able to sort of you know put a mirror on the world and how people are reacting to all these things and just take the absolute mick out of it. So I'm actually really looking forward to this. There hasn't been a longer episode of South Park in terms of the TV show ever since South Park Bigger, Longer and Uncut, which was the, the South Park movie. And I mean, that was way back in 1999. God, that's depressing. So <coughs> really look forward to this, I have to say. South Park recently did actually move to HBO Max. So they are continuing to stockpile all the best stuff, really. So HBO Max will be great. It better launch this side of the world, tell me. Uh, so yeah, so looking forward to that as well, I have to say. <coughs> One other thing I should mention is that, you know, I was talking about the titles coming out next week. Unfortunately, Deceased is still not on that list. I have a real feeling it's going to be Deceased 3 and 4 in the same week, but I'll keep you guys informed as always. But I am going to finish off with a little unboxing video. Uh, there were two new items I brought home for myself this week. We do have more of these in the store, so if you like the look of them, you know, pop in, we, we get you sorted. But two figures uh, that I really wanted to get. So the first one is... The first one is Ant-Man and the Wasp. So I'm a big Ant-Man fan. I think Ant-Man and the Wasp is the most underrated Marvel movie. I think it is exceptional. I put it in the top three easy. And therefore, when the chance came along to have a, I think it's Kotobukiya. Yeah, Kotobukiya figure with, from Ant-Man and the Wasp. I thought, here we go. Trusty Batarang is all. So yeah, let's have a look at this. I mean, with Kotobukiya, the statues usually tend to be sort of one to, one to eight scale or one to nine scale. Now this one, it's quite interesting to put together. So you can see all the different component parts there. So let's have a look here. Because again, the other reason to do this is, as anybody knows, I, I consistently wrestle with the whole idea of should we open the statues or should we uh, let people open them themselves? Because you, you want to make sure that what you're getting there is brand new. You don't want to be getting something that people have you know had to repack away after taking it out and stuff so it's always good to do these little unpacking videos just for this reason just how much sellotape is there oh my god almost there right that looks like all the sellotape never good when you hear that kind of cracking noise cool so what do we have so looks like we have stand just to kick things off with. <coughs> so the main body of the figure is here. So you have the Scott Lang Ant-Man. So that looks like it's going to slot into there. So that you'll see this in the background uh, for the next show. But yeah, it looks to have come in about eight pieces. So <coughs> just build it bit by bit. So yeah, there's some great detail to this, I have to say. <clears throat> so you see the Ant-Man head just there. Always looks weird when you've got headless characters. Ooh, coming together rather nicely. <clears throat> so this will obviously sit as part of a, uh, a double figure. So you have large Ant-Man and you have Itty bitty small ant man. But as well as that, you also have the wasp. Which comes with her own little, own little stand as well. So you can actually just put the two of those together. So if you're able to pick uh, the ant man and the wasp, these ones out in the background, you have a really, uh, really good eye. So cool little figure all around though. Yeah, I'm an Ant-Man fan, as I say. I think Paul Rudd does an amazing job in the movies. I think they have the right level of humour uh, for those movies. And they also, they don't deal with the larger ramifications of the, the Marvel Universe. You know, I always loved Ant-Man and the Wasp. Came out after Infinity War. And after, obviously after showing Thanos, you couldn't really, well, you know, what, what bigger threat could you legitimately give? 
so they, they went a different way. But anyway, uh, so the other one, to no one's surprise, will be a Batman one. Also a Batman v Superman one. So this is a Beast Kingdom one. I believe this is a 1 to 9 uh, scale. And this one is Armored Batman. So from the epic fight at the end of BVS with Superman. You know, one of the regulars asked me this week what I wanted for Christmas because he's, he's bought me a Christmas present every year. I keep telling him not to, but he buys me one every year ever since we opened. And I said, I'd like you to build me a cowl from uh, the fight in BBS. So I'll be curious to see if I get it or not. But yeah, so you pull this out and <coughs> I can now relax because I was worried because I could hear jingling in the box. But it would appear that it was the silica gel moving on. So you can see all the different components there. So you've got the main uh, body, you've got you know the kryptonite spear, you've got the gun loaded with the kryptonite bullets, uh, kryptonite grenades I should say. You've got all these different hands as well, which I would imagine are utilized to hold each of these individual weapons. If you look at the back here, you can see that it has its own cloth cape, which will be coming out. And of course, most importantly, <coughs> pretty good figure, got the stand. So, this one's been getting quite a lot of admiring glances in the store. You know, the packaging for it is beautiful, but it doesn't quite give enough away. Always good as well when you have a wee separate bag just full of batarangs in there as well. So, this looks like it's going to be really, really easy to display. So, as well as having the stand itself, we've also got little holders. So, stand just there. But you've got this little uh, separate package with the holders for it, which means you'll be able to clip Batman into place and into certain poses. So <clears throat> these are becoming more and more popular in collectibles these days where you'll basically have this grip in the middle that you can maneuver so that you can then put that around the main body of the character and then it also moves so you can pose it in whatever way you want. So essentially this will sit like so. And then you'll clip Batman onto it there with whatever sort of uh, weapons you want. I have to admit, I thought that was one of the hands with Batman giving the finger there, but it would appear not. But yeah, ooh, detail on this is lovely. So you're essentially looking at the armored Batman there. So again, you've got that really good weight to it as well. Um, so you can see there just really class detail. Cloak just hangs down really well. Yeah, I should say the cape, not the cloak. Um, loads of different points of articulation there as well, which uh, gives you lots of options for how you want to display it. And then again, yeah, the hands will be removable and allow you to set it up whatever way you want. I mean, I can already see that that's gonna be the hand to hold the kryptonite spear. slide through there hold that in place but yeah uh, I'm gonna have a little bit of fun with that one first before I actually put up an, a finished picture from it but I'll, I'll superimpose a picture at the end of this video just so you can see what it looks like fully built up so uh, anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this YouTube show as ever uh, anything you see as I say you, you like the look of or any of the, the, the issues I enjoyed this week the Catwoman the Batman and so forth just get in touch and we'll always do our best to get you sorted with those just in case you missed out uh, I'll look forward to the releases next week, uh, which will be a, a nice busier week for us as well. And we'll go from there. So again, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, feel free to rate and subscribe, leave whatever comments. We're always happy to chat away further about anything we've talked about here. And in the meantime, stay safe out there and take it easy.